Let's take a look at some examples where we predict the molecular shape for some molecules that have expanded valence. All right, we're going to use the VESPER model for these examples to predict the molecular shape, the valence shell electron pair repulsion model. The first example we're going to look at is the molecule phosphorus pentachloride. I've drawn here the Lewis structure for phosphorus pentachloride because that's the first thing you need to do in predicting structures. Then you count the number of regions of high electron density, and in this case there's one, two, three, four, five regions of high electron density on the central atom. We predict the electronic structure for five regions of high electron density to be trigonal, bipyramidal, based on the fact that the regions of high electron density are going to arrange themselves in space as far apart as possible. According to the rules, if all the regions of high electron density are occupied by bound atoms, then the molecular geometry is going to be the same as the electronic geometry, which will be trigonal bipyramidal. The last step is to correctly draw the shape indicating the bond angles that would exist in such a structure. We do this in this way. Two of the atoms will be in the axial positions, and the other three will be in the equatorial position. And we use this system of dashed lines and wedges to indicate an atom behind the plane and an atom bound in front of the plane. Straight lines in this type of molecular representation are used to indicate that those atoms would reside in the plane of the paper, in this case, or the screen. So behind the plane is dashed, in front of the plane is wedge. And we would predict these bond angles in the equatorial positions as all being 120 degrees apart and from the axial down to the equatorial as 90 degrees, 90 degrees. So this is in the axial position, whereas this is, let me draw this better, in the xy plane we call that the equatorial positions. Let's look at another example. The next example is sulfur hexafluoride. Here I have drawn the Lewis structure for sulfur hexafluoride to get us started. In this case again we have or rather we have one, two, three, four, five, six regions of high electron density. In that case we would predict the electronic geometry to be octahedral. And again all the regions, the molecular geometry is going to be the same as the electronic geometry, which is octahedral. And to draw that structure, um, again, with a Lewis structure, we don't have any kind of three-dimensional um, inklings about the structure, but in, when we draw the correct molecular shape, we need to indicate the bond angles in our drawing. And so this is how we do it for octahedral. We put two atoms 180 degrees apart, and then the other four are going to be in what we can consider the xy plane, two of them behind the plane, indicated by dashed lines, and two of them in front of the plane, indicated by the wedge here. In this case, all the bond angles are predicted to be 90 degrees, 90 degrees from the axial down to the equatorial, and 90 degrees between each of the equatorial positions. So this is how we would indicate octahedral geometry. Let's take a look at one more example. This is sort of an obscure molecule, but it's a good molecule to just look at an example of an expanded valence. In this case, when I do the Lewis structure, I realize that I have 36 valence electrons that need to be placed. And when I place these electrons, satisfying the octet for all of the terminal atoms, I've only used 32 of my available 36 electrons. So what I have to do according to Lewis structural rules is place those last two pairs of electrons on the central atom. In this case, when I determine the electronic geometry, 
for this particular molecule, I still see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six regions of high electron density. All right, and when I have six regions of high electron density, that indicates that I have the octahedral electronic geometry. However, of those six regions, four are bonding pairs of electrons and two are non-bonding or non-shared pairs of electrons. In this case, I know that my molecular geometry is not going to match my electronic geometry, but rather the molecular geometry in this case is called square planar. And you just have to remember that name. All right, and then to draw it properly to indicate the bond angles, I need to know that the non-bonding pairs of electrons are going to arrange themselves in space as far apart as possible because they take up more space. So in this case, the um, non-bonding pairs of electrons are going to be in the axial positions. That leaves the four equatorial positions available and where my fluorine atoms would be predicted to be found. Okay, and so this is why it's called square planar because it looks like a square all in one plane. So it's square planar. You should practice some on your own.